Hey Sam, I want to apologize. I thought I was going to do all kinds of things for you, but I was unable to. So I'm, what I'm going to do is basically give you the rest of the notes and tomorrow I'm going to have to give you the packet. Please don't be mad at me. So um, the rest of the notes are a little bit extensive. So I want you to try to follow along. I'm trying to read as neat as I possibly can, um, but I want you to take a look. So basically this half of the work that you're going to do is really going to deal with the last few exponential laws that we talked about. So here, we're going to simplify this. And so you remember, with the same base, different exponents you're going to subtract. So you should get g to the second power times h to the third power, because 3 minus 1, remember there's a 1 here, because that's 1g, 3 minus 1 is 2, 5 minus 2 is going to give me 3. And so that's what I got. Um, the next one looks a little bit weird, but this is like that law, um, I think it's number 5, I think it was number 5 where everything inside is going to get an exponential, is going to be affected by this exponent. So we've got 3 to the second power, p to the sixth power, over 7 to the second power. So my final answer is 9 times p to the sixth over 49. And there's no way to reduce that, so I'm going to just leave it just like that. All right? This next one has two parts, but as what you'll notice is that... Um, it looks really complicated, but I don't really need a whole lot of room because we've got this thing. Remember, when you have an exponent that's zero, it takes everything that it's, that's, that it's, that's being raised to it, and it just becomes one. So anything to the zero power is one, and therefore the answer here is one. Of course, we can go in and say, well, four to the zero power, and n to the two times zero power, and q to the, right, right, but you don't have to do that. This whole thing, raised to the zero power, is equal to 1. Yay! That's why we didn't need a lot of room there. All right, so for this guy over here, we've got x to the fifth and x to the third power. I'm sorry, the fifth grade is upstairs making a whole lot of noise. I'll try to get B fast. Okay, x to the fifth and x to the third power and y to the first, to the zero power. So x to the fifth and x to the third power will become x to the second. Again, that subtraction rule, same base, different exponents, subtract 5 minus 3 when you're dividing. And then y to the zero power is just 1, so my answer is x squared. All right, we are moving along at a great clip. Let's see what we have over here. So example 8, we're going to simplify this thing here. And I told you, you guys remember, you remember, this is just for you. A to the negative m is equal to 1 over a to the m. And then I mentioned something about um, basically when you have a negative exponent, it flips. I'm going to tell you why I said that before we attack this problem. So we're going to think for a couple seconds. So if I had 3 to the negative 1 power, you know that that's 1 over 3. What if I had 1 over 3 to the negative 1 power? Okay, I want you to think about that. This is a huge thought bubble right now. Huge thought. So what happens if I have 1 over 3 to the negative first power? Well, you can take the logical step of supplementing, of substituting, pardon me, 3 to the negative first power with 1 third, which is what it equals. So you have 1 over 1 over 3, which is a complex fraction, which really means 1 divided by 1 third, which really means, stay with me, stay with me, it's about to be brilliant, 1 times 3 over 1. My thought is getting squashed. 1 times 3 over 1 here, and then the answer is 3. So technically, not technically, definitely 1 over 3 to the negative first power is really 3. And 3 to the negative first power is 1 over 3. The key here is that, and the reason why I talk about the flip thing, is that when you have a negative exponent, you take whatever's being raised to that negative exponent and you move it to the opposite place. So if it's in the numerator, as it is here, you move it to the denominator and you make the exponent positive. See, it's in the numerator here, boom, drop it to the denominator, change the sign to a positive. It's in the denominator here, boom, move it to the numerator and the exponent, positive one, is positive. So with that in mind, we're going to look at this problem, all right? So when you have a negative exponent, if something is in the denominator, you're going to move it to the numerator and make that um, exponent positive, okay? I don't, please, 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 let's talk about it in class if it's not making sense, all right? So here's how it works. So n to the negative fifth power is going to drop to the denominator as n to the fifth power. p to the fourth power will stay where it is. And r to the negative second power in the denominator is actually now in the numerator. What? I hope that made sense. 
let's talk about it in class but that's real this is real stuff okay so this is um, this is the final answer because there's nothing to join or simplify I'm gonna get rid of our thought bubble so I have a little bit of space to work on this next problem all right so over here as I look at part B, I have 5R to the negative third power, T to the fourth, and then I've got an R here and a T to the seventh and a U to the negative fifth, and don't forget my negative 20. What I can do is I can actually work with just the numbers here, the five and the, neg and the negative 20, and that can be reduced to one, um, one over four, or negative one over four. And I'm gonna, I can put my negative here because a positive numerator divided by a negative denominator is ultimately a negative fraction. So now we've got to figure out the placement of the rest. Well, R to the negative third power is going to drop into the denominator. And if you can do this in your head, I think you can, R to the negative third power drops into the denominator is positive R to the third power times R to the second power is going to give me R to the fifth in the denominator. Okay? T to the fourth power and then t to the seventh power down here. If I were to subtract four minus seven is going to give me a negative three, but that's if I'm up here. But if I'm down here, it becomes t to the third in the denominator, right? Think about writing uh, four t's up here, seven t's, crossing them out. You're left with three in the denominator. And finally, u to the negative fifth becomes u to the fifth in the numerator with that little flippy rule that we talked about. So I'd finally write my answer as negative u to the fifth over four r to the fifth, t to the third. And that's all she wrote. That's it, all right? Hopefully that kind of made sense. And we have one, one last example. We're going to do the same thing we did here, to, um, up here with the two um, regular numbers, the non-variables. We've got 2 over 10, and that becomes 1 over 5. And then we're going to deal with the a. Since a to the negative third power is down here, we're going to raise it up to the numerator, and it's going to become a to the positive third power, so we get a to the fifth b to the third, b to the negative first, raise that up. We're going to have b to the fourth. I know I'm talking quickly. I hope this makes sense. I really do. Okay. c to the negative fifth and c to the negative fourth. Technically, c to the negative fifth is going to be down here, c to the fifth. c to the negative fourth is going to go up there. So I'm actually going to have, hold it in your mind. Oh, you don't have to. I'm going to have c over to the fourth over c to the fifth, which really is going to cancel out to c to the first in the denominator. I know that was bad. Delete. Ah, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so hopefully that kind of made sense. So let's go back through how we got everything. So the A's, how did I get A to the fifth? A to the negative third becomes A to the third, and I'm going to add up those exponents. B to the negative first became B to the first in the numerator, and I'm going to add those exponents. So I got B to the fourth. This one was a little bit tricky. I guess we could kind of do, you know what, we could probably look at this another way. And this is one thing that's really funny about these problems. You can do them a thousand different ways. Oftentimes, it just depends on order, and you can use the rules in different ways. As long as you're using the rule correctly, if you use them at different times, you'll find that it'll work. So let's look at let's look at it this way. Instead of that confusing thing that I said last time, what if we did negative five minus a minus four, right? Because that rule is true. We have to subtract them. So negative five minus a minus four gives me c to the negative first power, but that will be up in the numerator then I know with the flip rule that I've got to bring the C down to the denominator. Better? I don't know. All right, but that's all I have for, um, for today. Please make sure and um, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll have your packet for you tomorrow. Sorry, Sam. I'll talk to you soon, sweetie. Bye-bye.